My name is Kirk White. My background is actually in IT. I was a systems and network uh, administrator for years, uh, but now I am a full-time freelance theme developer. That's what I do, and I love it. Uh, I also volunteer for what is called the WordPress theme review team. Uh, this is a team of volunteers Audience participation already, this is great. Uh, so I also volunteer for a team called the, uh, the Theme Review Team. So when you go and download themes from the free theme repository from WordPress.org, all of those themes have actually been vetted by a team of volunteers for the quality of the code. So that is one of the, uh, that, that is the Theme Review Team, and I also volunteer for them. So this is how we're gonna roll today. A couple of rules. If you have a question about something I'm talking about right at that moment, please ask right away. It's so much easier to deal with something whenever, when, when, uh, when everybody knows what we're talking about. If, however, you have a question about something I said 10 minutes ago, please, by God, wait, okay? We'll have 10 minutes at the end, I promise, uh, for any questions that come up on anything theme-related that, you, uh, that you'd like. We've got a lot of smart people in the room. I'm learning just like everybody else. So, hey, if something seems wrong to you up here, speak up. Because the last thing I would want is for anybody to leave a presentation with inaccurate information. That, that would just be awful. So, seriously, speak up and we'll get it sorted out. Now, this is, uh, there is code involved, so I'm gonna have to assume that you understand some HTML and CSS. Don't worry, I won't be testing you or anything. But really, when that stuff comes up, I'm gonna breeze right over it. PHP, we're gonna be a little bit more lenient, okay? Uh, I'm gonna talk about some basics, uh, such as how to actually make a function, and uh, I'll be a little bit more descriptive with the PHP. HTML and CSS, you're on your own, all right? So yes, we have code, but I promise I, I have pictures too. So it's kind of a nice balance, okay? So this is gonna be our overview for the next hour. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about the tools and the skills that you need for theme development. We're gonna talk about the setup. It's not a typical setup. It's a little bit different, so we'll get into the details. Theme anatomy, notice I put a little exclamation mark. That's because that's the fun part. That's the fun part of what we'll get into. That's the meat and, pota uh, the meat and potatoes of today. Wrap up and then questions at the end, I promise. I keep saying I promise as like a, a self-reminder, make sure to leave time for questions. Tools and skills. Your tools and skills for theme development are the same as your tools and skills for web development. When you're building a theme, you're just building something that will display a website. You need a good, strong text editor, things that are important, syntax highlighting, find in files, uh, snippets, autocomplete. Uh, hopefully this all makes it online, and uh, uh, at this point, if you're watching online, just go and look up Jeremy Clark's talk from the day before about IDEs and NetBeans, and then you'll get a good idea of what you need. He goes into a lot, uh, a lot of that uh, detail. Local development. Win uh, sorry, WordPress is based on what is called a LAMP stack. Typically that means a Linux operating system running an Apache web server with a MySQL database, and in our case, PHP. So if you want to be doing this development, you need those elements on your computer to do it. Uh, if you're using Macs, uh, across the board, most people will use a product called MAMP. It's free, wonderful. Uh, and I believe it's called ZAMP on Windows. I don't really know. I have a hint. Uh, of course, one of the things we do endlessly in web development is we test in browsers. And uh, us people who use Macs all the time, but are stuck with, of course, having to test on IE7, IE8, and IE9, there's a new tool that will rock your world. If you go on to github.com, uh, now you'll see that there's, uh, there's little links here also. If you're following along with these slides, these are all active links, so you can just click on them, no needing to type them all out. Um, and what you're gonna come across is a tool called IEVMS. This is your favorite friend. Okay, I can't go into detail about how great it is. It's just your favorite friend for testing, uh, for testing Internet Explorer on your Mac. Go and do it, you'll love it, and you'll thank me. Send me an email later and you'll thank me. <laughs> I have had a, a really life-changing experience, I, I kid you not. Over the last few months, uh, I've, I've changed my entire workflow to be around Git. Uh, does everybody know what version control is? Raise your hand. 
Okay, if anybody didn't raise your hand, this is one of the things you want to know. It feels a little complicated at the start. Essentially, this is going to replace that system of renaming folders with dates and all that stuff. I, I, I kid you not, uh, I told someone the other day, once I started using Git and got it into my workflow, I swear to God, my apartment seemed bigger. Uh, the, the sun was brighter. Um, I, I looked in the mirror, I swore I was better looking, and I think I have more friends. And all of this really is because I'm now using version control in all my work and using Git in particular. Skills, web development skills. HTML, CSS, these are obviously very important. Um, if you're like me and kind of coming a little late to the game, I used to develop websites when, when the cool thing was like Dreamweaver and tables and all that. So when I started getting back into it, there's a lot of catching up to do. A really great site is a site called NetTuts Plus. Uh, in particular, any videos by this fellow named Jeffrey Way will get you up to speed with modern practices very quickly. I, I can't recommend it enough. Uh, the WordPress element of the, the Tut site may be a little uh, less reliable, but anything by Jeffrey Way, you can count on it. It's great stuff. HTML, CSS, PHP, and actually Jeffrey Way has a great uh, series if you need to get up on your PHP called Diving Into PHP. It's a little uh, older now, but it's all fundamentals. It all applies. You've noticed I've uh, crossed out JavaScript here. Uh, WordPress comes with, uh, with jQuery, a JavaScript library. When you're getting started with theme development, you don't need to be uh, knowledgeable in JavaScript. Frankly, you can do a lot of theme development and never need to deal with JavaScript. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because when you're starting out with theme development, obviously you're going to have lots of issues and lots of problems. You're going to go online and you're going to say, and you're going to Google, oh my god, this thing is broken. How do I make it uh, you know, be that? And inevitably, in some form or something, there's going to be some guy who's like, dude, super easy with jQuery. No, OK? <laughs> jQuery and JavaScript, they're, the jQuery and JavaScript are for enhancing your user experience on the front end, OK? For problem solving, do it on the back end. Do it on the server, and that means PHP, OK? Don't go like having your theme spit out crap to the browser and then sending JavaScript to mop it up later in the browser, don't. Do it right the first time, have your server send the right information, fix it in your PHP. Your PHP skills will be stronger and that way you'll be using uh, jQuery and JavaScript for the really fun stuff to enhance it all. I've prepared a really handy uh, little graph for you just so you can see where your skills are, okay? And so you can see how your skills will develop over time. Uh, HTML and CSS, yeah, they go. Uh, PHP, the more you do theme development, the more you'll rely on your PHP. Uh, sometimes it's intimidating. The more you invest in your PHP, the better a theme developer you are. And uh, well, I need say no more about uh, your, your jQuery and JavaScript. Your setup. Your setup is not a fully typical uh, local setup when you're doing theme development. Uh, the same applies for plugin development, too. Uh, the very first thing you want to make sure of, obviously uh, I'm not going to go into installing WordPress. You need to have a working install of WordPress to begin with. Uh, the, one thing you, the first thing you want to make sure of is that you have WP Debug true. Uh, did anybody see uh, Mo's talk yesterday on debugging? There you go. All right. Uh, he went into a bit of this. It's very important because when we're developing themes, we want to know when things go wrong, okay? We want things to fail grandly when we're developing so that by the time it actually gets in someone else's hands on a, on a production server, it's all good. So uh, in your WP config, you've got uh, down here, you've got all that fun stuff, and then down near the bottom, you'll see this one line. Uh, by default, when you install WordPress, it'll say WP debug uh, false. So you want this true so that, we'll, uh, so that you can spit out errors on the screen. Very important. Um, plugins. We need a particular suite of plugins installed for our theme development that make us uh, efficient in our job. Uh, there's a whole pile of them, and the greatest part, uh, this was part of Mo's talk yesterday too, is that actually someone got really smart and said, hey, well, if we need all these plugins, why don't we make a really great plugin that just does it all for us? So just get started with this one plugin. You'll see this one plugin called Developer. 
And uh, you can just install that one plugin and it'll do this really great thing. Mo demoed this yesterday where it just pops up a little modal box and says, hey, you need this, 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 this. You click it all and it's all done. It's the future. It's really great. <laughs> awesome stuff. And this, uh, that's really new too. I think that's only come out in the last couple months or so. So that's really fun. Dummy content. It's a really great thing to be building themes and essentially, what if I go over here? Nothing? Ah, oh, I like to move around when I'm nervous. I guess I'm stuck over there. Okay. Dummy content is very important because when we're designing themes, we'll be designing a theme that will, uh, that will spit out code and content that we have no idea uh, what it will be because we don't know who our end users are. So what we do is when we're designing our theme, we want to make sure that we have some representative content, some, you could call it worst case scenario content, so that as we're developing, we'll be able to take care of all of those, uh, any issues that come up in design according to what content may be there, so that once it actually gets to a production server, um, whatever people throw at it, it'll be able to handle gracefully. Uh, you'll see here in this setup that I have, um, we have a whole pile of posts here, really different stuff. Uh, scheduled posts, it's scheduled for 2030. If your theme is showing this post, there's a problem. Uh, we have layout tests, sticky posts, all sorts of uh, post format tests. Uh, you can see right here what it looks like. This is sort of our dummy theme that we'll be working with today. So I'll just, demo, uh, just show you what some of this looks like. So you have here, oh, hey, we have a, a post where somebody threw in a whole pile of different headers, some text, they threw in a bunch of, uh, bunch of images and aligned them all in different ways. This is the worst kind of case scenario you want to see when you're developing so that no matter what your user ends up doing, it's all handled properly and all handled gracefully. There's an optional part when developing, uh, when developing uh, themes also, and this is a framework or a starter theme. Often you'll come across these themes and people will call them starter themes and they say, hey, use this theme to make your theme. It sounds a little meta, it's a little weird. All it means is that it's a base, it's a code base to start from. So that rather than having to write everything from scratch, you're able to rely on somebody else's really strong code base to start with. And then you just have to fill in your blanks. Um, Frameworks are a little bit different and, and a little bit weird. Um, often when a theme calls itself a framework, that means that it's a theme that's really, really complicated with a lot of features built in. Often they come with like 19 widget areas and 17 short codes and all this other stuff that you may or may not find useful. So when you're picking up something called a framework, just make sure you know what you're dealing with. Uh, and as a couple of speakers have said, you know, one of the things you want to make sure of is that you understand the code you're working with. So if you're building something on a framework and you don't understand three quarters of what's in there, maybe start a little bit simpler and move up. I do have to say also there's a great starter theme right now. Like if you want to do it like the big boys do it, uh, they're uh, automatic. When they build, uh, when they build themes, they start with this, uh, they start with a theme called, uh, with a starter theme called underscores. Uh, and I believe it's uh, the website now, they just released, a, uh, just launched a new website for it called underscores.me. And this is a fantastic tool. So if you want to know how the best people in the business, the people who work for Automatic, the people who are like writing WordPress, you want to know how they're uh, starting their code base when they build themes, start with underscores. It's a great base. So those are our, uh, that's our setup. We get to the fun part. We get to the part with the exclamation mark. Theme anatomy. This is the really fun stuff. Now, it's important, and I say this is important because I had a lot of frustration with us um, uh, myself over the last little while. To be able to do theme development, you kind of have to know how WordPress works. I don't mean you have to understand every line of core. What I mean is that you kind of have to understand the general process of how things happen. And when we get started in theme development, we often don't really, well, to be frank, we kind of get it wrong, or at least I did. Maybe you're better than me. I was getting it wrong for a really long time. So we're going to take a little example here and try to, try to make this as simple as possible, okay? So we've got a, a user here, uh, doesn't have a nose and a, or eyes or anything because I can't really draw and that's really hard. So he's sitting at his computer there and let's say he clicks a button that, uh, 
that was, uh, that was in a theme uh, and says, uh, and that button corresponds to a URL that is gonna get sent uh, to, our WordPress, uh, to our WordPress install on the server. And let's say that URL is site.com slash authors slash Bobby. So that URL arrives at the server. This is WordPress, where I'm gonna call him WP. Um, he's a stick man, because that's all I can draw. So it's gonna, that URL is gonna arrive at the server and, in, and he's gonna say, wow, it looks like you want all of Bob's posts. Because uh, when the WordPress process starts up, it looks at that URL that came in and tries to decide what it is uh, you want from WordPress. So he says, hey, looks like you want all of Bob's posts. So what does he do? He goes to the database, database where all the red hot data is, and uh, the database prepares this lovely little package for WP. And WP wraps it all up with a nice little bow and gives it to the theme. And of course, the theme is very appreciative. Uh, I know this doesn't really look like a theme. I'm trying to, I'm, I was kind of, I was thinking it's sort of like a, he, uh, sort of like a, a header with kind of like a footer at the bottom and a sidebar and a page. I don't know. Uh, that's what I came up with. So that's where we're going with. So what can we take from this romantic tale? This basic simple fact, which will become very important. When WordPress gets to our theme, it already has our posts. Okay? Say it with me. When WordPress gets to our theme, it already has our posts. Good, not bad. Not bad for Sunday morning. This is, a, we'll see why this is important as we go on later. So when we get into theme anatomy, uh, I'm gonna put this down now. So we can still hear me now? Yeah? I talk loud anyway, so that's good. So the anatomy of a theme. Got a bunch of different things that go on. Let's just look at this basic little thing that we're looking at right here. Um, footer functions, header, index, sidebar, style.css. I should say to have a valid theme in WordPress, all you need actually is a file called index.php and style.css. Oddly enough, it's a valid theme if those files are even empty, believe it or not. Uh, just as long as those files exist, WordPress can read it as a valid theme and activate that theme. Uh, if they're empty, it's kind of useless, so don't really bother doing it. But that's what I do on Friday nights. I do things like try to throw empty files at WordPress <laughs> themes. Don't tell anybody. Uh, so first up in our list, uh, we've got style.css. Uh, style.css has a, uh, a wonderful task. Uh, in, in particular, of course, it's obvious for styling our theme. But uh, the really important thing it does is it has this comment section. It, it has a header with a little comment section. And uh, when we look at that, it'll tell WordPress exactly what kind of, uh, where are we here? It'll say, it'll give details so that WordPress can pull it up in its theme admin. So if we look at our theme section, we can see that we have active, we have current theme. I've just called it minimum for fun. Uh, you can see we have a description here, a version number, author, and all of that is coming from WordPress parsing this little, uh, this little comment at the beginning of style.css. Often in your style.css, you're going to start with having a reset section. I didn't uh, add one for minimum here because I wanted it to look all like, you know, sort of like 1997 sort of thing. Uh, so normally you would have a reset section here. Um, there's actually a talk afterward on child themes uh, directly after this talk, which is great because it meant that I could just toss out everything I was going to talk about with child themes. Uh, so normally you would have, uh, uh, when you do child themes, you'll have your import section here. I'm sure this will make sense uh, when Tracy does her talk. Um, and then of course you just get into your classes. Uh, WordPress does generate some classes on its own and it's imperative that you uh, deal with and style these classes, particularly uh, when looking at things like alignment. If people are in the back end and they look at a post and they go into their post, uh, see these little boxes right here? If they take something and they decide that they want to align it right, WordPress is going to spit out uh, an align right class, okay? So you need to make sure that in your theme you say what is supposed to happen to those things, or else people are sitting there doing things in the back end and they're not getting it on the front end. So it's imperative at least that you do a line right, a line left, and a line center. Uh, there's also uh, other WordPress generated classes here 
which you can choose or not to style. Uh, and then the rest of what's in here uh, for this theme is just some readability and some styling. For the sense of the demo, all I did was I uh, just added some borders so that we can see what's going on here. Uh, but really, to have a valid theme, you don't need much more. Uh, next up, we have functions.php. So pretty self-descriptive, our functions.php will hold our functions for our theme. Uh, who knows uh, what, uh, like how to write a function? If I, if I was going to say, write a function, could you do that? Put up your hands. OK, that's good. Not bad. Um, so essentially, we define a function here uh, with, the, uh, with the command function. And then we have theme slug underscore my underscore function. Your function names need to be, uh, need to at least have their spaces separated with underscores. It's considered best practices. You can use capitals and such. Uh, styling for um, uh, PHP styling guides for, uh, for WordPress kind of says no, keep it all lowercase. Uh, theme slug, you may be wondering what that is. It's very important to understand that when you, uh, when WordPress is parsing through your page uh, or, or is loading a page, sending a page to the browser, and when it runs through all the functions that are being defined, if there are two functions that are defined with the same name, you die. Everything just stops. Uh, okay, let's do that, just because we like to see things muck up. Uh, so we can see right here, hey, uh, I'm gonna refresh. Everything looks lovely. I'm gonna go in here, okay, and I've defined a function here called setup, uh, called minimum setup. I'm just gonna copy that, and I'm gonna put that uh, right down here so that uh, we can say, okay, our function is now, we're now defining two functions called setup. When you do that, things kind of go south really badly. So imagine the trouble this can cause, though, because you're developing your theme, and say you're careful that uh, none of your functions have the wrong name. What about, like, the guy down the street is doing that plugin? WordPress themselves define, I'm assuming, hundreds of functions. So we all need a system that we can use so that those functions don't, uh, just don't collide. So what we do, I'm just gonna back that out so I don't uh, trash anything later. Um, so what we do is we make sure that when defining our functions, uh, usually we use what is called a theme slug. So I've called my theme minimum. So I'm gonna start all of my function names with minimum. And then generally, no matter what I use for the descriptive part after, that'll, uh, you know, 99% of the time, that'll be unique enough so that when people use our theme with whatever plugin they happen to be using, whatever version of uh, WordPress they happen to be using with whatever functions, uh, there won't be any conflicts. Yes? It, okay, is the question, is, is camel case valid or? Uh, camel case, you can use, uh, what is called camel casing is when you stick everything together and you just uh, make the first letter of every word uh, an upper case rather than everything else which is lower case. Uh, you can do it. Um, as long as it's a valid function name for PHP, you can use whatever you like in your themes. Um, generally, there's style, uh, there's accepted styles for writing uh, uh, PHP, and WordPress themselves say essentially we just stick to everything lowercase. But yes, camel case is valid. Um, so that's how we have, uh, so that's uh, how we write a function. Essentially, you then have uh, open, uh, open brackets, and then whatever it is your function is doing. So essentially, a function is just a chunk of code with a name. And then when we want to use that function in our code, we just call the name of that function, and PHP will just insert whatever it is that that function's doing. Next, we have index.php. Now, cool thing to know about index.php, like I said, it's the only template file you actually need in your theme. Uh, and it essentially contains the markup so that when WordPress has a bunch of stuff to send back to the browser, there's a way to present it. We need HTML markup to present something in a browser. We have a choice now. Uh, you can actually, like I said, it can be the only one you have. Uh, we'll get into later, uh, there's a thing called the template hierarchy, which is a very important tool. I'll discuss it very briefly, and then that'll explain why there's so much in here and so little in ours, but uh, that they both work. So let's take a look uh, quickly at index.php. It starts off with this thing called, uh, that says get header. Uh, do people know what template tags are? Anyone? Okay, a few of us. 
this part here uh, is very important. Essentially a PHP file, uh, when the name ends with .php, it tells a uh, PHP language on your server, hey, parse this and find any PHP that's in it and treat it as PHP. So what we can do is we can actually mix HTML and PHP. So what we've got right up at the top there, uh, and the way we need a way to tell, uh, to tell our server what is PHP and what is not. So what we do is we wrap it in these tags. The, uh, so less than, uh, question mark, PHP, and then we end it with a question mark greater than. And this tells, uh, this tells our server that whatever's in between those uh, treat as PHP. And our general terminology is these will be called template tags. So these are functions. You can see it's a function name. These are functions that are defined in WordPress that do particular things. So there's all these template tags we can choose from that will do particular things in our themes. So all we're saying right here is we're saying get header, and what that, function, uh, what that template does is it loads a file called header.php. So this will be the top of our file. You can see it goes right down. We've got a header structure and ends with this template tag called WP nav menu. So that file, header.php, is taking care of everything on our page right down to here. We then get into uh, a few other things in index.php. Uh, I'll skip that one, which we'll come to later. Uh, and you can see we've got other ones. Get sidebar, which loads our sidebar.php. Get footer, same thing, footer.php. And as you get more involved with theme development, you're, you'll find that there's more and more and that a lot of these actually have parameters that you can send to them uh, to make it uh, even more detailed and uh, to give you more control over what you want it to do. Now, the really fun thing about index.php or about most template files that you'll use is that there will be this thing called the loop. Now, the loop is very special and very precious to us. It's a sequence of code that displays our posts. So remember when we got that, uh, we got that pretty little box from WP and he handed it to the theme? Well, themes need a way of showing what's in that box, okay? And what we use for that is the loop. And you see that the loop here is also just a bunch of, uh, a bunch of PHP functions. And it's a very particular sequence. So we open up with if have posts. So look in the box, are there any posts there? If there's not, we move to the end if, and we don't do what's there. Move on, while have posts. So while have posts that's saying, hey, while there's still posts in the box, take one out and process it for us. So while there's still posts in the box, take one out and pass it to the post, and the post is what actually sets up all our variables and uh, lets us work with that particular post. And because it's a, because it's a while statement, this section here, this section in here will just keep looping through for every single post that we have. So what that ends up looking like in real life, it can be something like this. Uh, you can see we have our have posts, uh, while have posts, the post. And this section right here, article with a bunch of another, uh, some more template tags and such. And so essentially all of this code right here is what's going to be run every time we have a post in that little box that we got. Uh, so you can see what that ac actually ends up looking like is this section right here. So for each one of these, WordPress went into the box, pulled one out, and ran this code, which is our, uh, which is our, uh, which is our loop. We have another tool. And this tool is called. These tools are called conditional tags. Sometimes WordPress will. Uh, we don't want exactly what it is that WordPress is handing at, uh, is handing to us. So we want to be able to say, hey, if we're in a particular situation, maybe do something else. So we can take, for example, we can take uh, one of our conditional uh, tags and say, hey, is archive, if what we're looking at in the box is an archive, then do this other thing. So that way we can set up different situations for ourselves and really tailor the content that's getting sent out by our theme. Um, we move on to what I started to briefly describe as the template hierarchy. This template hierarchy is super, super powerful. Now you can imagine all of the different things that your theme can spit out, right? Uh, we've got, uh, maybe you'll have one post, maybe you'll have seven posts, maybe there'll be a category archive, maybe it'll be an author, uh, maybe it'll be nothing at all. 
it would really kind of suck to have to write a theme and do and take care of all of those situations with just conditional tags. So this is a fantastic system uh, built into WordPress called the template hierarchy. Now, uh, so I kind of lied a little bit. Uh, I kind of lied. I said that uh, WP wraps it all up and, uh, and hands it to the theme. Specifically, that's a bit of a lie because actually it has to go to one particular file of the theme. So WordPress has to know how is it, uh, how do I decide which file it goes to? And WordPress uses a system of specificity based on whatever information is in that box. So it starts at the top, most specific, and goes to least specific. So, like I said, and you can see here at the bottom, we've got, uh, we've got just index.php. That's why it's so important to have index.php, because if everything else fails, we still need to be able to put out whatever it was we got into the box onto the screen. But, uh, but we have other options, because uh, say we want to present different layouts. Maybe we want to present different designs or just add some additional information when we're in a particular situation. So rather than having one mega index.php that includes every conditional tag for all these systems, we can take advantage of the template hierarchy. And this template hierarchy is going to allow us to just name files with particular names, and WordPress will figure out that that's the template that we want it to use. So uh, let's see if we can do this here. I love the template hierarchy. It makes life so much easier. So let's start. So we've got our index.php. So that means that no matter what comes up, index.php is going to be handling it. Okay. So let's say uh, now in WordPress, a lot of things count as uh, a lot of things count as uh, what is called an archive. Okay. Um, uh, posts by users, posts of a particular category, posts of a particular tag. So when someone clicks on a link for a tag and it spits out well, whatever posts exist just for that tag, we're actually looking at what WordPress considers to be an archive. So let's go and make a particular template for archives and maybe we'll give it a convenient header. So I'm going to open up uh, our index.php here. I'm just going to save it as archive. And now we have an archive file. And in that, right before we do our loop, I'm just going to say, let's give an A3, H3 tag, and we're going to call it archives. So if we go back here. If we go onto our main page where we have uh, our list of, uh, of everything, well, what happens if we go to an archive now? Say, uh, let's look at cat C. Now we get this very convenient header, a very convenient title. And that's because WordPress saw that what was in the box was an archive, and it said, OK, hey, I'm going to start up at the top. Uh, and in our particular case here, it was, uh, it was a category. So it's going to say, hey, is there a template file for a particular category? No. Uh, how about for any category? No. Oh, archive. Category is an archive, so I'm going to show the archive.php template file. And that's why we have this archive showing up uh, very conveniently here. Uh, so what if we want to get even more specific? Well, because you see, this is actually going to show uh, for all of our authors, too. So we're going to click on Chip Bennett here, uh, who is one of the users included in the dummy content. Uh, and we're going to see, OK, we get the archive title because we're showing an archive of Chip Bennett's posts. But we want to be more specific. We want to say, hey, actually, that's an author. And we want to do something special for that. So we can get even more specific. Let's take uh, archive.php here. And we're going to call it author. And we're going to take that author template. And we're going to say archives. And we're actually going to call it Authors. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the question is that sometimes that there's plural forms for template tags, such as authors versus author. Um, WordPress, like any other site, can include whatever file it wants. So if you see things like authors.php, chances are somewhere in that theme, uh, the theme is calling an include for that file to use it. But there, but your naming for the to take advantage of the template hierarchy is very specific. So if you see authors.php, it's not going to be called by the template hierarchy. 
It's going to be called by something else. Uh, and you can actually, uh, I believe I have, uh, this is what the real template hierarchy looks like. And uh, you can find this in the codex where you go for all uh, specific information regarding WordPress. Uh, and it's a, it's, it's, so you can see there's a very particular flow to it. And all of these marks right here, which are completely illegible to you at the moment, uh, are very specific file names. So if you want to take advantage of the template hierarchy, you have to use a specific file name. So getting back to our archives, uh, we looked at, right, we're going to see, OK, so we now have a specific one for authors. So if we load back up, OK, we've got uh, on our basic page, we've got nothing. Go to any category, we still get archives. But now if we click on an archive which is an author, we conveniently get authors. So that's pretty great. So you see that we're moving up the template hierarchy here and while still allowing things to flow down. So we can get, the most specific we can get, uh, actually as you can say, uh, let's go back to our main example here. So we called uh, site.com slash author dot uh, slash Bobby. Uh, and I'm gonna mess this up. I'm gonna go back and forth and keep calling him Bob because I wanna call him Bob. But there's this one thing in WordPress, you can't have a username less than four characters. So I tried to set this whole demo up with Bob and wow, it didn't work. So. <laughs> As far as code goes, he's Bobby. As far as I'm concerned, he's Bob, OK? Just to avoid it, we don't think, oh my god, it's Bobby. But he said Bob is broken. I don't get it. Uh, just so you know. So I'm going to take author here. And I'm going to save author as author-bobby, which is his username in WordPress. That's very specific. That's what the template hierarchy needs to be able to take advantage of that. And you know, we want to highlight Bobby because, uh, you know, hey, he was uh, employee of the month. Right, I didn't even misspell that. <laughs> Shh. So we now have an even more specific template for author Bobby. So we go back to our site, our general list of posts regular as ever. Look at any archive. We've got archives, but if we get more specific and look at an author, such as Chip, we've got our author's title. But now, magically, I say magically because the template hierarchy is helping me. Uh, if we were to look at, oh, look, we have this post uh, published by Bob. Yes, sir, Bob. And hey, we can actually highlight Bob himself. So the template hierarchy lets you target things without having all of the ridiculous amount of uh, conditional tags and such. How am I doing for time? What are we, uh, 10.38, good lord. Did I promise questions at the end? I did, okay. Because we get to, we get to do some really fun stuff now. Um, hooks, these are really confusing. I know these are really confusing because you're like me and God was I ever confused, okay? There are two kinds of hooks. Hooks are little ways that we can put our stuff into WordPress's own code that's running, OK? So there are two kinds of hooks, actions and filters. And of course, whenever I don't understand anything, I draw a picture, OK? So an action is kind of like, when WordPress does something, do our thing too, OK? So uh, we can see here, it's a lovely day, and WordPress uh, WP is here painting a landscape. And theme says, hey, if you're going to paint landscapes, every time you paint landscapes, add a cow for me, OK? So we've got paint landscapes, add a cow. And what happens, WP being always so accommodating, he's painting a landscape, so he adds a cow. I think theme is a little disappointed. Um, <laughs> probably because of the cow's really skinny legs, I can't draw legs. So everything in my little cartoon world here has one dimensional legs. And we'll just live with it. But I did get some little cow texture. I don't know if you can see that. OK. So actions are hooks that allow us to run code when certain events happen. OK? So and what's, uh, what is the, how do we take advantage of this? We write a function. Get used to writing functions. You're going to love writing functions, because we use them for everything in WordPress, uh, in WordPress theme development in particular. So we write our function. And whatever it is our function does, we got our fun stuff there. And then we call this other, uh, we call another function actually, it's just a function, uh, add action. Action name, 
and then the name of our function that we want it to run. So this is, you know, uh, this is action, painting landscape, add a cow, okay? So what are filters? Filters are kind of the same, but kind of not, okay? That's why they're so confusing for people, including me. So theme here is decided, he doesn't like yellow balls. He just doesn't like them. So whenever uh, WP hands him a yellow ball, he says, yo, WP, uh, I don't like yellow balls. Can you put that through my filter? WP goes, well, hey, of course I can. Filter chugs along. And of course, it co what comes out? A green triangle. Because theme likes green triangles way more than yellow balls. And he, apparently, he's kind of blowing the mind to WP there. So filters are hooks that allow us to manipulate or change something into something else, OK? How do we take advantage of that? We write a function. So we have our function, theme slug my filter. Now you'll notice there's something in between our brackets now. Because our function has to be able to have something coming in. That's coming into our function. So we assign a variable to whatever it is that's being passed to our function. So I'm going to call it input for simplicity here, OK? So whatever we call that variable, we can use it in our function to do things to it. So I'm going to set up another variable and say, hey, output equals whatever input was, and then we're going to concatenate some extra text. So output equals whatever came in plus extra text. And then we're going to return the output. Okay? The return part is very important. What comes into our filter is something that WP gave us and that WP needs. So we need to be able to give it back. Okay? It's a filter. Something goes in, something goes out. Yellow ball go in, green triangle go out. Okay? Oddly enough, you can just to really mess with your mind. You can take advantage of this, and if there's something that gets filtered that you don't want on your screen or you don't want, you can just say return false. And then WP goes, oh, hey, here's that yellow ball. And, you, and your theme just goes. And WP just goes on without his green triangle or his yellow ball. So you can use that. Child themes. Child themes, yay, there's a talk about child themes right after mine, so I don't have to get too involved in them. Uh, what we've been talking about up to this point is actually what are generally called parent themes. Parent themes are full themes. We have the option to make what is actually called a child theme. And all a child theme is, is a child theme piggybacks onto another theme. And Child themes, actually, the only thing that's required in a child theme is uh, the style.css. So say you like the default 2011 theme, you love how it works, everything like that, but you're like, man, I totally wish it had a red border up top. Rather than mess with the code of 2011 itself, which you don't want to do, because as soon as 2011 gets updated, all of that just stomps over whatever changes you made. So instead of that, you're going to make a child theme. And then that child theme, all it needs to have in it is to say, hey, whatever's in the parent theme, add a red border. And then that way you can take advantage of having your cake and eating it too. The one thing that's very important, and this will mess you up, usually when there's something in a child theme, it will take precedence over whatever's in the parent theme. Easiest way to remember this is just like real life, okay? If anybody has kids, just remember, if there's a showdown between the parent and the child, who wins? Child wins, OK? So if you have a template tag in the parent theme and you want to do something different in your child theme, you just name it the same thing. WP comes along and it'll take it from the child theme rather than the parent theme. But functions.php is different. WordPress actually loads both of them. Your child theme does not stomp on it. It gets loaded in addition to. But it gets loaded first. And this is important, because pro uh, parent themes that are written properly will uh, have code in them that will allow you to override their own functions. So if there's a function in the parent theme, and it spits out, uh, you know, uh, welcome to Missouri, because that's what was in the theme. Um, so you can actually say, hey, I'm going to define that function first, and then we're going to say, welcome to Montreal. And then that way, uh, it gets loaded, uh, functions.php in the child theme gets loaded first, and it gets defined, and then that section gets marked as welcome to Montreal. And because the parent theme was written properly, 
in a way to say, hey, if that function doesn't exist yet, then do mine. You don't have to worry about things like having that function declared twice. Another odd thing, I don't know why, child theme, you can't make a child theme a child theme. I'm sure there's a really great reason. Uh, I don't know why. It'd be cool to be able to do, but you can't do it yet. So don't try. I've spent many Friday nights trying to do that. <laughs> so let's wrap up, OK? What have we learned today? You use your tools and your skills. You're going to combine them with that theme, uh, with your development environment. Remember, you've got, um, you've got WP debug true. In there, you've got your proper plugins that you're using. Uh, you've got your dummy content. Maybe you've got your starter theme. You're going to use your HTML, CSS, PHP skills, uh, your jQuery skills, if you really insist. Um, you're going to use those, and you're going to use those to make theme templates in your theme according to the template hierarchy. You're also going to combine that with uh, a functions.php file. In that functions.php file, you're going to be writing functions. And those functions, you're going to be attaching to actions, paint landscape, add a cow. And you're going to attach those functions to filters as required. Yellow ball, green triangle. You're also going to take advantage in both your templates and your functions of conditional tags so that you can further target certain situations and get what you want out of it. There are a lot of resources uh, to make yourself the best theme developer that you can be. Uh, the theme review team that I was telling you about at the start uh, maintains a mailing list. And if you want some really um, detailed, some might say less than Friday night exciting reading material, subscribe to that mailing list. We uh, Essentially, we just discuss best practices endlessly over and over and over for separate things. Uh, you'll learn uh, often first about uh, new things coming down the pipeline for versions of WordPress, uh, and we'll discuss uh, as much as we can, uh, what the best processes are for handling those new things. So really, uh, subscribe to that mailing list. Go to these theme, uh, just go to this slide, uh, it's all online, and uh, click through for the, for the actual URLs to be able to do that. Uh, next, a lot of the devs and theme developers for WordPress are very active on Twitter. Uh, so I just made a link actually that starts with whoever I'm following. You can just build off of that and tailor as you wish. If you're one of those visual learners, you know, don't really like reading as much, what's great is a lot of these talks, but as these talks are being done uh, today, uh, any in this room, I believe at least, uh, a lot of them will make it up onto WordPress.tv. So you can see talks that are done from WordCamps from around the world. It's a great way to learn, and it's a great way to actually get familiar with the devs that write WordPress and the people that work with WordPress every day. Make WordPress.org, uh, there's a themes blog. Uh, if you know what a P2 is, uh, these are actually, uh, it's a blog that is essentially run by the theme, uh, uh, the people of the theme review team. So it's another way to get information about uh, current best practices and for staying up to date in theme development. And a pretty new thing, or sorry, actually there's a themes forum. Uh, go to WordPress.org, click on support and forums. Any questions you have, uh, people will be willing to help. And there's also a new thing that's an automatic project, and this is called CodePoet. Uh, it's just starting out. It's got a lot of great stuff to begin with. I believe Shannon actually mentioned uh, there's a, um, an article uh, or an ebook on responsive web design. Lots of great resources for uh, theme developers. Now, just something to uh, a quick note we're used very much to just going to Google and typing something. There's, pardon me, there's a lot of information out there. Some of it is accurate, some of it is less than accurate. So uh, before you just blindly start dumping uh, copy-paste crap from a tutorial into your functions.php and wondering why it's not working, take a couple extra seconds, see if your source is fairly reputable, and you'll save yourself a lot of pain. Uh, so are there any questions? <laughs> <laughs>